All right, ladies. Well, this show, I think, has given us everything we want in a reality show. We've got drama. This is not right. We've got dragons. And even a little romance. I gotta get right into it. Vanjie, Cameron, what the hell's going on? If you watch my interview with Hey Queen from years ago, I always said I thought Vanjie was cute. If you had to Kai Kai with anyone, it would be Mangy. Does she have to say her name while we do it? I don't know. I guess you'll just have to watch and find out. Because I honestly forgot what happened. <laughs> well, you saw the little trailer. We were kissing, bitch. We, you know, we adults, and sometimes we be little kids. I'm the yeah. I know I was shocked, but that's just because I think of like these girls as like my sisters and coworkers, and I have to be like deep in the hole to want to put my tongue down my sister's throat, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Literally. I wasn't shocked. I think if I can say, Cameron, who's probably my closest friend in the show, is very much so a hopeless romantic. She really is. I would say that's very true. Um, always looking for, I don't want to say the next ex, Miss Michaels, but you know, they always end up being that way, but we'll, maybe this one will work out. I don't know. Banji is just the do whatever I want when I want type of person. So something like that was maybe bound to happen. I think it's great. I think it's beautiful. I'm excited to see whatever journey that is. I mean, Evie, oh, you got a front journey. row. It's a journey, okay. Because <laughs> Evie, you got a front row seat to what was Brangie. So it's like, uh, now Vanjie's given us two drag race relationships in this run. It's kind of wild. She likes them tall and she likes them flexible, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Good job. Child, yes, I do. We need somebody that can bend me up like a pretzel wetsuit. And wait, but wait, if they're flexible, that got nothing to do with me. Uh, yeah, tall, flexible, make me feel fishy. Okay, Maybe we will, you know, you so we've got the bitch. Brooklyn commented on the trailer and asked who's the better kisser. So who's the better kisser? <laughs> okay, Derek. Don't yeah, sorry. Me. I will have to kiss them both at like um, back to back to really get a good uh, critique, but child. Nashville boys. We've got six episodes to see where this thing goes. I am very excited to watch it. Five nights a week, RuPaul's Drag Race Live. Here we go. Here we go. Derek, I feel like you're getting to live out your fantasy because I remember when we talked for All Stars 5, you said, I realize I am a reality star, a reality personality. Oh, I've been ready for this since I moved to Vegas in 2004. I really do feel like the last 15 plus years has just prepped me for this moment. And it's everything I wanted. And I'm the only one from All Stars 5 in the show. So cheers. <laughs> You may have gone home first, but you get more screen time now, so yeah, you get a and, prize. and not in a competition. And that's what I love about this is it's really highlighting all of our talents, and it's giving people a backstage look into our lives. I mean, that's what really the fans want to see the most is what goes on behind the curtain, what goes on backstage, what goes on when you go home at night. Did any of you have any trepidation or fear in showing your real life on TV for the first time? I didn't. I didn't get a chance to showcase a lot of my, just my show self even on my season. So the fact that you get to see me in a show and get to see part of my real life is like just a blessing to me that I get to, you know, show my fans and show the audience that because I didn't really get to portray that on my season. So I, I'm fully, I'm there for it. I'm ready, let's go. So Cameron we... loved the camera. <laughs> <laughs> camera Michael. And I think everybody but Derek here has been profiled in the Work the World docuseries. Naomi, how would you say this show is different from what we've seen on Work the World? On Work the World, I'm not necessarily a huge fan of being on camera because we are traveling in like a tour bus and we're waking up in a new city and there's so many other things to worry about than like, hi, I'm Naomi Smalls and I can't, you know, it, that's just not how my brain works. So I think that being in one place, being comfortable, like having a set stage just had a lot more reliability that I'm into. And I love the whole like no competition being featured on the show because I don't want to put my drag into a competition ever again. And I'd rather just like compete in my head with the girl's wigs backstage. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say she was the weakest link. I think you did. Can I talk to Naomi? Whoa. <laughs> It's nice for people to get to see like us as individuals and get to see how we are outside of the competition aspect of it. And so that's 
really what this show is. It really is following us getting ready for what I think is the hardest thing we've done when it comes to drag. Evie, would you agree that the Vegas review is bigger and more intense and harder to pull off than Drag Race? Oh yeah, definitely. A, it's a live show and there's no like redos. There's no, oh cut, we can retake that. You can't stop a live show. And B, it's such a different experience than I believe drag queens um, are often used to working with because we usually are our own like directors, producers, like writers, we do our own hair and makeup. And with this show, it really was like a lot of being a part of an ensemble. Would you guys agree? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why no? Why no? Well, I haven't been on All Star, so I can't speak to that. When you're in a competition setting, you have to think of like so many other variables than the performance you're doing on stage. It was cool to like have a bond with the group before going into this setting. I loved having that familiarity rather than like stepping into Drag Race and having to deal with a bunch of strangers. But there is still a lot of drama. The trailer teases Asia seems to storm off. I'm entitled to be upset. This is Ridiculous. Asia moved out of the dressing room? What goes down? Well, it's a bunch of queens. You know s gonna happen. It is what it is. That's life. Well, of course there's six queens, so there's gonna be drama. You would think going into this because we're not competing that there would be um, less tension between one another. Clearly, we will find out really quick that that's not the case. Um, <laughs> bitches are gonna be bitches. Who was the biggest bitch, Asia? Um, well... Asia. <laughs> I don't think there is a biggest. I think most of us have our moments. I think Asia has a big personality. Anytime you have a big personality in drag, we've seen it on seasons of Drag Race, that's not always easy for big personalities to, to blend and mesh well. And so I think that it's just really gonna be exciting to see unfold. Flamingo Las Vegas. What is gonna surprise the Drag Race fans about the Vegas Review Show? I think it's just simply getting to see us in a new light, getting to not only see us as people who like are putting on a show, but they get the biggest peek behind the curtain and you get to see who we really are and who we were before we even became professional drag queens, I guess. So you get to see a more raw of a side of us and for longer than just a snippet. So I think that's gonna surprise people to find out who these bitches really are. Right, and the show is really about us as people and, and our lives and how that plays into our drag and not the other way around. And so um, I think people are gonna be surprised to see a lot of different layers and facets of our lives that they didn't know existed, A or B, they didn't know affected our drag so much. And that that's the whole purpose of this, is for people to get to know us as people and to get to understand why our drag is important and relevant to us and why some aspects of our drag are the way that they are.